When you have to shlank his nationwide uprising, the country has started to turn the corner from its worst economic crisis yet. You might remember the extraordinary scenes when Sri Lankan stormed the presidential palace in response to the crippling inflation and the shortages of basic goods like fuel. The protests culminated in President Rajapaksa's resignation. A few months ago, Sri Lanka secured a $3 billion loan from the IMF. While fuel and food shortages have ended, struggles remain. The economy is expected to keep shrinking in 2023. Ali Sabri stepped in as Sri Lanka's finance minister at the height of the crisis. He now serves as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Good to have you with us. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Linda. So it was a year, it's now a year this week since what was known as the People's Uprising against the government's poor management of the economy. A year since the president fled and then resigned. A year since the prime minister was forced out of office. How are things in Sri Lanka today? Uh, uh, things are looking much better than what it compared to be last year. Uh, inflation has come down uh, towards about a single figure uh, toward the mid of this month. Uh, tourists start returning. Rupee has appreciated uh, significantly, uh, almost about 20% against the dollar. We have eliminated the fuel and other queues, and we have entered into a deep reforms of the economy. Uh, so um, I wouldn't say that we are out of the wood yet, but uh, some significant progress had been made in all sectors of the economy. And in the first six months, uh, India provided $4 billion to assist in credit lines, currency swap, uh, essential drugs. Uh, looking ahead, talk to us about how Sri Lanka is cementing that relationship further with India in terms of port development, in terms of energy projects. Because I understand the Indian president is due to visit Sri Lanka next week, uh, July 21st. What can we expect? Yeah, Sri Lankan partnership with India had been historical. Um, last year, as you correctly pointed out, they gave us a lifeline during a very difficult time. While we are negotiating with the IMF and other uh, multilateral lenders, we had to have some sort of a bridge financing in order to fill the gap. India stepped in and provided that very, very important support to us. Uh, India had always been a very close friend and a traditional uh, and our biggest neighbor. So we are looking at India partnership with India as vital for our recovery and also the growth. Our president, Vikram Singh, will be visiting next week. I'll be accompanying him. There are a number of areas we want to uh, deal uh, and deal with India, particularly on the economic front. Uh, so we are looking uh, forward to that partnership, people-to-people uh, -people contact, linking connectivity, uh, uh, power connectivity, and investment from the Indian side on port, uh, refineries, power sector, renewable energy, uh, hospitality trade. So there are a number of issues and areas we would like to work with India, and there are a lot of momentum and, and, and kind of uh, hype towards this. We would work together in order to uh, build a better country for both sides, particularly in the northern region of Sri Lanka and southern part of India. And of course, uh, tourism is a big industry. Sri Lanka is a, a beautiful country to visit. I was there a few years ago and loved it. At the Thank height you. of the economic and political crisis last year, obviously it was a turnoff for tourists. Uh, can you tell us how the tourism industry is making a comeback? Have tourists returned in large numbers? Uh, actually, yes, uh, tourism is central for our recovery. Tourism is the third largest foreign currency earner for Sri Lanka. During the peak in 2018, Sri Lanka got about 2.5 million tourists. Sri Lanka is consistently ranked another one of the best places to visit, as you yourself had experienced. Uh, we have so much to offer, but we haven't come to the pre-pandemic level yet because initially uh, we had a few uh, set up and hiccups uh, during the pandemic and thereafter last year's uh, uh, the economic upheaval. But things are getting much better. Uh, people have started to come, particularly from India and, and the Western Europe. Uh, it, have, uh, it hasn't come up to the real potential, but signs are there. And this month has been particularly good because there is so much to offer. So I would uh, expect uh, so many others to return. A uh, lot of connectivities are taking place. A lot of flights are taking shape. 
Uh, a lot of tourists start coming in from various parts of the world. Uh, China had opened up, India had opened up uh, for a long, long period of time for Sri Lanka. And Western Europe had been traditionally a very good market for us. So does uh, Canada and other places where Sri Lankan diaspora are in numbers and they are returning to see their roots. So we are very, very hopeful that there will be a remarkable recovery towards this season, particularly in the winter in the Western world. Ali Sabri, uh, the Finance Minister, the Foreign Affairs Minister now for Sri Lanka. Good to have you with us on the program. We wish you and the people of Sri Lanka all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.